What are common services that we can expect from the cloud? What are common deployment models used today? Let's discuss that and more in this nugget. If you'd like more introductory material like this, by the way, I highly suggest you check out my Cloud Essentials course here at CBT Nuggets. I outlined here for you some of the benefits of cloud and why cloud is so hugely popular today. Now, while many of these are self-explanatory, let me elaborate on a couple of them. Elasticity would definitely be one of my favorites, not just because it's a cool word, but because one of the things this allows is for you to scale dynamically up and down your resources in the cloud as there is a demand, or unfortunately, a lack of demand for these resources. An example would be in Amazon Web Services, us using what's called auto scaling in order to scale up and scale down resources dynamically based on demand. Something else that's super cool is the fact that instead of spending a bunch of money up front on capital expenditures, we can spend literally nothing and we can start offering services. This would be with like a free tier account at one of the big cloud providers, and I'll give you the big four here in a moment. So notice we start for free, and then as we add more resources and we have more demand, we start paying. So capital expenditures are traded for operational expenditures, and they can scale as our business scales. Something else that's super awesome about cloud is that we can take advantage of new technologies that we might not be able to take advantage of on our own. Features such as artificial intelligence and machine learning might be unavailable to us without a cloud implementation. Another thing that we love about the cloud is that we're able to take advantage of an as-a-service model. This can really give efficiencies to operations, and it can mean that we spend overall less money, and we can offer services to our clients in an affordable manner. Software as a service is a great example of this. One of the prime examples would be like Gmail. Think of how many companies no longer have to try and maintain servers and software to provide corporate email when they have software as a service options like Gmail. Email. Platform as a service is awesome. This allows us to have in the cloud machines spun up, and those would be virtual machines, have these machines spun up so our software development team can go in and develop software. And think about it, today we need to develop software for a wide variety of clients, including mobile clients like Google, Android-based phones, and iOS-based Apple devices, so they can spin up quickly these platforms for software development. If you're interested in outsourcing most of your IT department, you can do so with infrastructure as a service, where you have the cloud provider give you the routers, the switches, the firewalls. Let's draw some fire. So all of these networking components can be virtualized in the cloud and offered as a service. Notice that so far we've discussed just about everything that an IT department might need to do, and this is where we start to get into everything as as a service or XAAS. We got so tired of breaking this down, there's like business planning software as a service and human resources as a service. So we just started to say, you know what? These days, everything can be offered as a cloud service. Now, when it comes to your deployment model for cloud, you might have the equipment and the expertise to do it all in-house. When you do this, you have a private cloud, and one of the benefits that you enjoy, as long as you know what you're doing, would be high security. Because you own everything that has to do with the cloud, you should be able to properly secure it. The exact opposite of this would be public cloud. Amazon Web Services, again, is a great example. We connect to Amazon Web Services via the internet, or even a private connection, and we let leverage their expertise to host the cloud resources for us. Today, though, the most common way to go is a hybrid approach where some of your cloud stuff is private and some of your cloud stuff is public. If you have a group of entities all giving 
their services to one cloud. We call this a community cloud. There is a U.S. government, for example, community cloud, and vendors that are participating are people like Microsoft and other massive cloud vendors that make special deployments into the community cloud to service the U.S. government. Finally, there's other kind of deployment categorizations that you might see today. In a really small environment, you might have cloud implemented with just a single server. Or if you're bigger, you might be relying on a single cloud or even a multi-cloud infrastructure. So you might hear some people say, we're doing public multi-cloud, meaning they might have some of their resources in a public cloud like AWS, and then they might be doing some of their resources in Microsoft's public cloud called Azure. So they might even be migrating workloads back and forth to save on money during various time periods. Now you can't think about cloud with at least at some point thinking about the big four. And we're talking about public cloud vendors here. There's Amazon Web Services from, of course, Amazon. There's Azure from Microsoft. There's the Google Cloud Platform from Google. And then there's IBM Cloud. Now please remember there are other players like Oracle has a popular cloud implementation and plenty of others. Rackspace would be another one. But but these don't have enough market share to be considered the big four. Something else I should mention is that the one that's gaining the fastest, uh, Amazon Web Services is by far the biggest, but the one that's gaining the fastest is Microsoft's Azure. Now, remember that we don't have to be deploying within the scope of these public cloud vendors. One of the deployment models we mentioned was private cloud. So if you're engaged completely in private cloud, you're not even considering the big four. Cloud, cloud, cloud. It's all we tend to hear about today, and for good reason. There are plenty of great benefits to moving to a cloud architecture and plenty of options in how it can benefit our organization. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.